Okay, we are here for our second dev update. Are you excited, Nick? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. It's taken us, like, forever in order to do this. We were planning to get these videos out, like, every other week, and then we just didn't. I don't know. What has it been? Like, four weeks? That sounds about right, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to get better at that. So um, we are excited to show you what is coming in the build. And for those of you who have pre-ordered and uh, have it on Steam, this will be automatically downloading to you everything we're about to show you here. And uh, if you haven't yet pre-ordered, you can go ahead and do that and you get access to these uh, pre-alpha builds. And you can uh, test them out, tell, them, tell us what you think, um, give us comments, all that stuff. So yeah, we are on build 9 and build 9's biggest feature has been about the mage tower. But there's a bunch of other features that have just been accumulated over the last couple months uh, in between these builds. And um, just to rattle off a couple of them, uh, we got some performance gains on the map, we got more towns to visit, um, we have a saving and loading of your game, except ironically, um, the next build is probably going to break that and um, all the save files won't work. So <laughs> that's pretty great, eh? So what we have here is a, a bunch of systems that's taken quite a while in order to put together. And it's um, how these systems go together that create the functionality that we're about to see. And um, it just takes a really long time in order to make these systems. And um, we've had some delays, and that's why we haven't had this video in two weeks, we've had it in four weeks. And um, for those that have been following the game for a long time, you might recall that I had uh, one baby when I started Archmage Rises, and I'm now up to three babies. But the good news is I put an end to that and uh, last Tuesday uh, I had a vasectomy and so now there won't be any more babies getting in the way of Archmage Rises <laughs> coming out. Isn't that great news? Yay! <laughs> no babies. It took, uh, it took me out of the project for a week where I could just lie on the couch and that's all I could do. So I just laid on the couch and played Dragon Age Inquisition finally and I finished it. So uh, let's get into it then. So what are we showing the people here? Um, in this new build. We are going to focus in on the Mage Tower and the Mage Tower has a lot of different features in order to kind of support it, make it work. Here we are with the Mage Tower. Um, now the previous build, uh, kind of the demo that we put out before, ended at this point. Um, this was kind of the success part and so that now we're just continuing on from here. So I have enough money in order to pay uh, for getting some land from this Lord and they struck the deal and so now we have our own land but with Yay. land comes great responsibility so here we go into our mage tower it's a new option now in the town is you can go to the tower and so the idea is that you you now live here this is like your home base where you live um, and you're kind of just on the outside of town so that's why you access it from the town so here we are at our mage tower it's a little hovel and there's a couple of things to notice um, over here on the side we can see what our monthly maintenance is that's uh, taxes and upkeep um, based on um, the kind of mage tower we have and you can't see the insides yet but i'll show you that um, the next is the treasury which i'll talk about in a little bit and finally is our building materials and this is what we use in order to expand our mage tower so i'm going to go ahead and go into building the structure and uh, we call them blocks and we're giving you a couple of different blocks to play with here. Um, there will obviously be more in the future as we continue making content. But we have two things that are um, either made out of stone or made out of wood. So I'm going to go ahead and um, expand out this mage tower here with, um, with some nice wood addition. Look at that. That is a fat tower, Thomas. It's woody. <laughs> um, yeah, so we got different kinds of things we put in there. And over on the other side, I'm going to uh, add some river rock. And, um, you know, maybe in the future as we're working on this, there'll be like ways to unlock different kinds of um, uh, building materials. Uh, probably get some exclusive stuff. Um, and uh, supports are things like arches that allow you to build without having um, something underneath. So the arch uh, gives it that support. And so uh, now I can build some nice smooth slate on top of there. And then we cap that off with a roof. Um, 
I don't think the roofing calculation is in right now, um, but the idea is that you have to have a roof above something when you finish building. Mm hmm. That keeps the rain out. Exactly. Gotta protect your stuff. That's right. Um, there's also decoration stuff. I'm, I'm not gonna put them in right now. Um, so that's the uh, exterior. So now that we have all that space, we can fill it with stuff, and that's what rooms are. And we can see from my building that the monthly maintenance has now increased um, from what it was, and uh, my building materials went down. Okay, so we go ahead and build rooms, and rooms have to exist on floors. And so to make to give you, the player, the ultimate freedom into what constitutes the second story and the third story and the fourth story of your building, um, we have this concept floor. So you just drag them in and just say, yeah, that's where the next story begins. So over here is a good example. We're going to have a, a bottom main level floor and then we can have a floor right there and then way up here we can have another floor. So this allows us, um, I'm going to put in a creaky staircase. Um, so we have to have access to these floors. And so I put in the staircase and there we go. Now we can build rooms in there. And so we got a couple of rooms um, available here right now. This is storage room, gives us more storage for storing our stuff inside of our mage tower. We can put that here on the second floor. Um, let's take our study and we'll put this up here on, uh, up at the top of our tower. Nice quiet place, listen to the birds. Once we, um, put in this potion workshop um, that gives us some new actions so let's go ahead and take a look at those actions was it hard making all this Nick uh, yes <laughs> how many months did it take to uh, get this working as smooth as silk as it is right now oh I don't know we're still working on it Thomas but it's, it's <laughs> taken a couple months at least just to get it running um, you know, it gives you a lot of freedom over normal building. You'll notice that the blocks are a different size than the rooms. So it just gives us um, a lot of flexibility and to create, uh, you know, the mage abode of your dreams, whatever that might be. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been at least two months or so that we've put into this feature. So a little longer than we expected, but um, I think it'll be worth it in the end. So um, once again, what we're showing here in this video is just a taste of the features and the systems that we've built for the game. Um, we haven't filled them in with a lot of content yet because it takes a lot of time in order to build content. Well, it takes a lot of time to build the system first, then it takes time mm -hmm. to build the content. Um, so we would put in a little bit of content just to kind of prove what it can do. Um, and then we can move on to some uh, other things. So, uh, so tower actions. So these are things that we can do in our tower. Now, these options are all driven by the rooms that are in here. And uh, for those that watched the previous video when I talked about making it kind of like XCOM base building, you know, you build a laboratory in XCOM, okay, now you can research. You build a workshop, okay, now you can manufacture some things. So that's kind of the idea here. So we have a bedroom, so it allows us to rest, so we don't have to pay for staying in inns. Uh, we have a study, so now we can study our books. We don't have to pay to go to the, the conclave libraries. Um, and the, the one I'm going to really show is crafting. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the treasury. So the treasury is a concept that uh, we came up with while we were building the mage tower, and it solves a really big problem. And the problem is that you have to pay these bills each month. Um, but you're off adventuring, you're in a dungeon, um, you know, you could be anywhere. But back home, you need to pay all these bills, you have to... Uh, you know, pay your taxes to the Lord or something on time and stuff. And there's ramifications if you don't pay things on time. So uh, we decided, you know what, you should have a treasury, which kind of is an abstract way of saying you're trusting your money with somebody. Uh, maybe it's a servant or a neighbor or someone like that. And um, when you have your first bedroom, uh, you can store a certain amount of money in your treasury. And um, basically that means stuffing the money under your mattress. Um, that's that's how you start off as a, as a lowly mage before you become an archmage. So um, that money is there in order to pay your bills. So we can see here that my monthly maintenance is 1,213 uh, gold pieces a month, which is really high. So what I need to do, and I'm just gonna give myself some money because I know what the secret key is. Um, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer in enough money into my treasury. And um, when you're walking around the world with gold, it's heavy and um, maybe you can be, some of it stolen by robbers or pickpockets or something like that. But when you put it inside your treasury, it's nice and safe. Um, unless people attack your mage tower. So we're going to go ahead and uh, deposit a bunch of money. So 
I put that money in there, now my treasury's gone up, and so now I have enough money in order to pay my monthly bills. If I didn't have enough money come the first of the month, something bad happens, doesn't it, Nick? Yep. What happens? Uh, you basically lose the game at this point <laughs> because you get thrown in prison. That's right. You go to debtor's prison. Um, so in the final version of the game, debtor's prison won't end your game. Um, it'll just cost you months or years of your life, uh, depending on how the person feels towards you. But we decided for this, um, if you go bankrupt, it's game over. Um, you'll have to start again. So um, depositing money in and out of your treasury is important, and uh, there'll be more fe features in the future, like if, when you own a business or something, um, the money is automatically deposited into your treasury. Okay, so um, crafting. Um, so now because we have a potion workshop, we can craft potions. And so the tooltips tell you everything you need to know about this. It takes three herbs and one week in order to make potions. And the difficulty is determined by your potion crafting skill. And then it tells you what happens for success, critical success, or failure. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it is going to <gasps> roll some D20s. Holy cow, look at that, Nick. I got three potions. Roll. So the uh, difficulty of uh, making a potion is uh, currently 15. That's based on my skill. And um, you see that it rolled uh, three D20s. I'll do it again. Holy cow, I got three in a row again. Still pretty lucky. <laughs> That's amazing. So um, so a week of time has gone by, and I've used my materials, and I've created the potions. Um, I can't believe how lucky I am at, at doing this. Oh, that time I only got two potions. So every <laughs> time you make a potion and you get a success, it, it actually increases your uh, skill in potion making, which I can show down here. Um, so my craft potion is now at uh, skill 7. And so when I go to make potions again, uh, this time the difficulty is only 14. And that time I was able to create one potion. And so this is um, the beginning of our crafting mechanic. Um, it's uh, You have your materials and the amount of time that's going to take, and then you roll dice from a dice pool to get successes. And then uh, those the successes will mean various things. Either it's progress towards a very large project, or in the case of potions, it, it's one die equals one potion. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're, we're crafting these using herbs, which are in your storage. That's right. Um, yeah, so we could go and we can look at our storage. Um, these are items, and so I, I can transfer in some torches. Uh, minus 42, that's cool. Oh, that's because uh, I have too much stuff already in my storage. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I, I have 38 uh, herbs on me right now, and that's why I'm able to make those. So, um, There's your potions below. Yeah, you just made. just made those potions. So it tells me who consumes those. Healers, towns, and towns with adventurers outfitters. Um, that's a special kind of store. So we can go sell those right now, and this is a nice way of making some money. So let's go to town and uh, see if we could sell some potions. This is kind of where we need a loading screen. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we are. We're in town. And uh, the commerce of this town. Now, the economy stuff is kind of roughed in. Um, again, it's kind of giving you a little bit of an idea, but it's really rough right now. Um, not really balanced. There's a lot more features to go. But we had to get basic parts of it working um, in order to support the mage tower. So you have somewhere in order to go, and you can find wood and stone and herbs and other things. Um, to, to support your activities in the tower. So uh, we're going to go to market and we're going to see if uh, we can sell anything. And hey, they're buying textiles and they're buying potions. So I can mouse over this and see that uh, they are buying potions for 19 gold pieces. So I click that. Okay, bought it for 19. Now, because I sold them one, they have more than they did before. So now they're only paying 18. So as I continue to sell them, it goes down. Um, not it doesn't always go down by one. It's it's based on a number of internal factors and part of the simulation and such. But this is how you can make some money. Um, and 13 gold pieces isn't very much money. Um, this is kind of the balancing stuff that we still need to do um, before we push this out. But um, but that's how you can go and um, interact in the towns. You can buy um, because they have the uh, uh, woodcutter or lumber yards here. Um, we can we can buy wood. Oh. Yeah, so it's giving me an error here and telling me that I can't buy any more wood. And the reason is, is because I can only carry five something, basically five weight. 
and uh, and I have tons and tons of weight because I cheated and I gave myself a whole bunch of stuff for this demo. <laughs> and so we have a concept of draft animals. And so the idea is that you get a, a draft animal of some kind and it automatically has a cart and the draft animal is able to pull a certain amount of weight. So when I click on these, you can see these are the stats for the various animals that are available for sale here. And you can go and travel around the world and everybody has different animals for sale. And the animals themselves vary as well. Like not all bears are the same. I mean, that's just true, right? Like in mm -mm. Portland, Oregon, you guys know that not all bears are made the same. Oh, our bears are the strongest. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So um, you can see what the strength uh, parameter is on this particular bear, right? It's 21. So if I buy this bear, um, my uh, my weight that I can pull has gone from 5 to 26. And so the idea is to have a big enough caravan in order to be able to bring on a whole bunch of stuff. So when you start the game, it's only yourself. And so you only have five weight that you can haul around. And hopefully you can uh, get some money going through adventuring or whatnot, and you'll be able to to um, buy some of these animals and you see what their maintenance is per month. Where does the maintenance come out of? Comes out of the treasury. Mm -hmm. So that's how all that works. Uh, it's all kind of tied in together. So this has been a kind of a quick roundup of uh, all the features that are in this build. Is there anything that I missed, Nick? Uh, there's a bunch of stuff we have added um, that hasn't been there before. Uh, like serialization, you can save your game. Um, when you die, that save game is destroyed. Um, and I think we have, um, We've got a bunch of other, you know, small changes and quality of life changes, bug fixes and things like that that we've added in as well. Okay, so before we uh, take off here, let's just talk about what the next build is going to be. So um, today we've been talking about the build that's already already released um, on Steam today. Um, so next build, we are going to just totally focus on the content of the systems that we already have, like the Mage Tower. Uh, better dungeons, better combat, um, more spells, uh, more stuff. Just just a big content build because we've been putting a lot of time, I mean, up now like three years to building all these systems into the, the world. And then uh, we finally got the system working and we have just a little bit of content to show it off. And so I don't know what that's like on the receiving end. It's kind of like, oh, they talk a big game about this thing and then there's just a little bit of features that are in there. Um, and so we, we want to flush that out. So um, we're going to go and, and redo uh, the, all the skill checks in the dungeon um, because they're not very interesting yet. Um, what else are we going to do, Nick? Uh, we're going to work on balancing to make sure that uh, now that we have a bunch of different ways to make money and different things you can do, we want them to all be satisfying. Um, yeah. So anything you want to do is balanced to where you don't feel like that's the only thing you have to do. Totally. And um, re like I said earlier, we kind of roughed in the economy stuff. And um, for this next build, we're really going to flush that out more and do a lot more balancing. It's going to be um, the AI traders aren't in yet. Um, they were like kind of there, but then just didn't make it for this build. So um, yeah, so a lot of content coming in the next build, and that would be uh, near the end of January. Yeah, tell us what you think of this build uh, when you start playing it. We'll see you on the Steam forums, and um, we would love for you guys to post us some pictures of the mage towers that you're able to build. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that would be pretty exciting. I don't know if we should have a prize for best uh, mage tower or something, but look, it, it would be awesome to see people start posting some mage tower pics and um, sharing them with uh, us developers. I know Roger Indeed. would really like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Roger the artist. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, we're going to sign off here and um, enjoy the game.